This story is quite unique. I call it the 44 million to one against. Way back in 1960, my mother and father bought a beautiful, beautiful house in South Cumbria, a place called Greenside in South Cumbria. It was a three-story mansion in its own grounds with beautiful views across towards the Lake District and indeed the Kent Estuary. As I left the Pickford's removal vehicle that day, I fell in love with this gorgeous three-story building straight away. My brother was 10, I was five, I had a two-year-old sister, and mum and dad were very, very concerned about the three of us, and they made our beds up very, very quickly. They continued working into the early hours of the morning, unloading tea chests of crockery and uh, other items. Around two o'clock in the morning, they thought, let's turn in, and they made their bed up. Because the house was solitary by itself, there were no neighbours, the last job to be done would be to put up any curtains. They thought, we'll do that tomorrow. They climbed into bed and started to fall into a deep sleep after the long journey. Bright, bright moonlight was emanating into the bedroom. My father turned over and heard the sound of tiny footsteps. The door of the bedroom slowly opened and in came a liver and white cocker spaniel. He thought, how's that dog got in here? I've locked the door downstairs. He threw the bedclothes back, got out of bed and walked towards the dog. Come on, come on, let's have you. As he attempted to grab the dog's collar, his hand went straight through it. He was quite shocked what he'd seen. He made a second attempt and his hand went straight for the creature once again. The dog then turned and looked towards the window as if its name was being called. It then shimmered and disappeared. My mother woke up from a, a deep sleep and saw my father sitting at the end of the bed. She shouted, what's wrong? Well, I've just seen a dog. That's strange, she said. I've had a very strange dream, a very clear dream. There's a man outside in Victorian clothing he had a top hat, Victorian frock coat on. He was holding a dog lead and he was pointing up at our bedroom window. They put two and two together. Now they never told me, my brother and sister, until we were teenagers. It was a story that absolutely fascinated me and still does this very, very day. I really grew to love the house. I had many happy Christmases there, many happy birthdays. I attended the local primary school, the local secondary modern school, and I loved playing in the grounds and looking at the Lake District Fells and the Kent Estuary. When my father sold the house in 1973, it broke my heart, leaving all those beautiful, beautiful memories. Only four years ago, my wife and I went on a Mediterranean cruise on a beautiful ocean liner called the Oceana. We visited all those fantastic Mediterranean venues. On board the vessel, they had lots of entertainment, black tie events. And I remember attending one of those black tie events and going down to the restaurant with my wife and enjoying a thoroughly lovely meal. I noticed on the second table, there was a young lady that kept looking at me and smiling. And I thought, I really, cannot be that good looking. As it happened, she came across and said, it's Simon, isn't it? Uh, yes, I said. My name's Louise. I'm the events manager here on the Oceana cruise ship. Simon, I live very near where you come from in, in Lancashire. I do know about your tours and I've also attended your lectures. Have you ever thought about applying for a job as a lecturer for storytelling on the cruise ships on the P&O brand? I thought, well, Louise, would people really like ghosts, murders and mysteries? Oh, she said, I think they may. I'm going to give you an address and an email address for p and Cruises when you get back to England. Well, on coming back to England, I uh, contacted p and And much to my surprise, I was offered an audition. I could go down to Sussex or to Cumbria. Now, of course, I knew Cumbria very well, and coming from Lancashire, a much shorter journey from Lancashire to Cumbria than it would indeed be down to Sussex. 
I was given a telephone number of a lady called Maureen. She was the cruise director. I had a conversation with her. She said, Simon, my house is rather hard to find. I'm going to give you a sat-nav code. Uh, just bring your laptop and your projector and, of course, all your stories, and we shall audition you on the Tuesday afternoon. So I put the sat-nav code in my car and set off and found myself driving over the beautiful trough of Boland into the city of Lancaster and then straight up towards South Cumbria, going past my old primary school over what's called Hevisham Head and then straight up towards a very, very familiar driveway and straight back to the house my father sold all those years ago. Maureen, the cruise director, had actually bought the same house. As I parked up outside the building, I was stunned. I was shocked, as you can imagine. I knocked on the door. Maureen opened the door. Uh, right, Simon, come on, bring your laptop in. Let's have this audition right now. You look a bit jaded, she said. Well, Maureen, I know you won't believe this, but I used to live here. No, 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 she said. I did. I've got some pictures on my laptop. I showed her the pictures and confirmed to her that I used to live in the very, very same house. Right, she said. I'm going to make a cup of tea. As I sat in the city, I looked around at the familiar rooms. I looked at the mosaic on the floor, the familiar doorknobs and the fantastic ceiling that I had so many great memories of. Maureen came back with a tray of tea. I then told her about my father's experience all those years ago in 1960 with the liver and white Cocker Spaniel. Her eyes widened. The teacup and saucer fell from her fingers and smashed on the floor. She looked into my eyes and said, Simon, my brother lives in London. Every Christmas he comes and spends Christmas with us. The very, very first Christmas he arrived, he had what would have been your mother and father's bedroom. In the early hours of the morning, he told me the door slowly opened and in came a liver and white Cocker Spaniel. I looked at the ceiling. My father had passed away many, many years previously. And as I looked up towards the ceiling and towards the heavens, I said, Dad, thank you. The story was definitely true.